and welcome to Culture on i24 News. I'm Abib Grober, thank you for joining me. Today on our program, we'll talk to the director of the Vocal Arts International Masterclass in Jerusalem. We'll learn about the unique musician Roland Young and meet the award-winning producer of Schindler's List. These days, the International Master Class of Vocal Arts is taking place in Jerusalem. Students will uh, have the chance to learn from star performers and participate in the Jamboki Vocal Arts Competition. I'm very happy to have in the studio the content director for the event, Rona Israel Kola. Thanks for coming in, Rona. Thank you for inviting me. So tell me about this master class, the competition, the people who are behind it, and what do you have planned? Well, our master class is... Um the product of a vision of Sonia Mazar, who is one of Israel's most renowned and best um, piano accompaniments for singer. She's mm -hmm. a wonderful pianist, and she works in the Israeli Opera and in the Academy, the Rubin Academy in Jerusalem. And she had a vision to give um, singers from all over the world, and especially local students, um, local singers with great talent, to give them uh, a week or two weeks of the best musical education possible from the best teachers that she could, um, that mm -hmm. she knew. And because we both led uh, international careers, we have a network of uh, good friends. And these friends, are, we are very lucky to have them because they're wonderful singers and mm. wonderful pianists themselves. And um, they were willing to come over to Israel and to give from their expertise and from their knowledge and their experience to give singers here a taste of this wonderful profession. It's it's pretty impressive, and it seems like it's not the only event that uh, that has taken place recently uh, surrounding the the world of opera. There was also uh, the opera workshops uh, just uh, not long ago. It seems like Israel is becoming a hub for for opera, or should I say, the vocal arts, which is a uh, what, what's the difference? Absolutely, you're absolutely right because. Um Israel is becoming a center because we have uh, the weather for it, and mm -hmm. we have wonderful voices here, and people from around the world are very intrigued by Israel, and they know that good voices are coming um, from Israel towards um, stages from around the world, and they want to know um, what's in the weather, what's in the water here that right. creates so, these wonderful so singers. So what is in the water? Who's participating? Um, the local singers here are... We, it's ageless. Um, we have no age limit, which is uh, it makes a difference because uh, we don't only encourage young singers in um, their careers. We want them. We want to encourage good singing, um, not dependent on age or, or star quality. We believe that uh, good singing has no age limit. That's why um, we have singers from 16 year old until 60. Uh, the wife of our sponsor is 80. Years and old, she's still and sings. she's singing, and she's wonderful. And I'd like to um, uh, say a word about uh, Yosef Shamboki, who is um, who took this wonderful project, and he took all his connections and uh, his resources to make this uh, international and to have this quality. Um, he said. Don't spare a thing. We want quality. And that means that we were able to get the best singers, the best teachers, and wonderful halls. And we were able to give these uh, singers who participate in the masterclass the opportunity to sing with orchestra, a symphonic orchestra. And that will take place on the 3rd of August in Gerard Bachar in Jerusalem. All right. And that's open to the public. That's open to the public. Yeah. And it's a must experience. Now, one of the stars is uh, Olga. Olga Makarina, if I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly, a soprano singer. Um, why is she such a big star? I'm not the expert here, so you're going to have to... She's a big star because she knows how to use her wonderful technique and give music um, a meaning that is absolutely... Who the people who were here yesterday, who heard her concert yesterday, the gala yeah. concert, yep. heard a wonderful uh, experience and a wonderful example of vocal arts that um, the wonderful sound that she was able to produce is actually uh, channeled into making uh, an unforgettable experience, a musical experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we uh, want to give young singers and uh, singers, good singers. We want to give them the opportunity to uh, know how to use their technique into creating unforgettable moments. What do you tell the students in, in the in the master class? What do, what do they need to have to become really the best? Is it 
all about talent, all about hard work, which I'm sure you need a little bit of both, but is there something else? What's the X factor, let's call it? Well, the X factor is a lot of hard work and it's um, meeting the right person in the right on the right moment. Because if you come to a, a master class like, like this is, and you meet a good teacher, and you have a network of wonderful singers who support you, and they say something that's absolutely right for you, it opens the gate into your wonderful qua uh, star quality, and then you're able to um, um, materialize your potential. Mm -hmm. And that's why masterclasses like this take place. Right. And this it's is not just the practice, it's not, not just the singing, just it's also the, the networking and the timing absolutely. of it. Absolutely, and the okay. opportunities that you seek, and it's very important for singers to seek these opportunities uh, opportunities we are able to give singers um, auditions this is something that Yosef Shamboki was able to give us um, people who participate in this uh, master class and they're good enough they will um, show it in the in the competition which takes place on the 2nd of August in the Mishkan Ochananim in Jerusalem it's also open to the public they'll see the talents of tomorrow and today and the prizes will be auditions and uh, cash prizes of course but auditions in Europe I see well, it's a, it's a, a wonderful project. I'm sure that many of the names that are uh, going through it will keep seeing for, for many years Absolutely. to come. And uh, once again, thank you, uh, Juana, for coming in. Let's just, I'd just like to finish by uh, mentioning the, um, the wonderful team of uh, teachers, which is Alexander Hausvater from Romania and Canada, which is a world-renowned uh, director and experienced to see him uh, staging opera, and Leonardo Andreotti from Italy, and Jelena Vlachovic from Belgrade, and Yasmina Trombetta a world star from Belgrade. Thank you all. Thank you. Now, a uh, pioneer of ambient electronica, underground jazz, and a uh, clarinetist with a cult following, Roland P. Young relocated from Brooklyn to a neighborhood in Tel Aviv. So who is Roland and what inspires his music? Daniel Campos and Pazit Dank went to find out. <laughs> Underrated and misunderstood for decades, a pioneer of a genre known as ambient electronica, Roland Young began to regain appreciation in recent years as vinyl collectors began rediscovering some of his old releases and EM Records, an eclectic label based in Japan, decided to release his old works along with new creations. Roland's music experience goes back to the age of nine, when he began studying classical and jazz clarinet under the guidance of his grandfather, Lawrence Denton, a renowned virtuoso clarinetist from Missouri. And it was here that his affinity with jazz was born, and his passion for experimental jazz would become his life. My first record was with a trio called Infinite Sound, and that was released on uh, 1750 Arch Records, which is really quite a known label. After Infinite Sound, Roland would become part of the new wave scene. I joined a new wave punk band called The Alls. We traveled around the country, played all kinds of punk clubs and new wave clubs, with people throwing beer bottles at my instrument and having a frolicking good time and puking. It was great. And he produced the Alls iconic album, First Record. Art was done by Jean-Michel Basquiat, art cover, and it was the title First Record. And I'm playing alto and tenor saxophone, and I produced the album. He lived next door to the singer, to the guitar player in the group, and he asked if he'd do a cover. Allegedly, he did it while he was sitting on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> But right after his experience with the Offs, Roland decided to go solo. And I started thinking about an electronic concept, some electronic ideas that I had. So I hooked my horns up, I had kalimba, electrified my kalimba, and started working with electronic music and electronic controllers at the time so I could expand in that direction. And that led to an album I did in 1978 that was released in 1980 called Is a Funny Wuggy Wuggy. 
But when the album was first released, the reactions were not positive. It was considered unorthodox by a lot of the people I was working with. They didn't like what I did. They didn't like the album. They didn't like the music. Maybe they didn't like me. But it didn't go over. <laughs> For such abstract music creations, Roland Young draws a lot of his inspiration from literature. I was influenced by No Exit, too, by Jean Paul Sartre, where we all live in hell, and there's no way out. And we spend our whole life creating false images or illusory images of life. But in the final analysis, we're in hell with No Exit. And of course, there's the Zohar. And within here, there's some stories that are killers. In 2013, Roland and his wife, Risa, known for designing the artwork of some of his albums and also for providing vocals in some of the songs, decided to leave Brooklyn and move to Tel Aviv. And this year, he released his first album, fully created in Israel. Confluences is the name of the album. It's the way things come together from different sources, different kinds of things, different rhythms, different motions. And I wrote all the music for Confluences since I've been in Israel. Croatian film producer and Holocaust survivor Branko Lustig won the 1994 Oscar for his production of the iconic Schindler's List alongside Steven Spielberg, of course. Recently, he decided to donate his award to the Yad Vashem Holocaust Museum. I-24 News correspondent Chachar Peled met with him, brought back this story. Producing an Academy Award winner for Best Picture is a challenge many filmmakers aspire to, but passing the coveted statuette over to others is an effort in its own right. You know that Yad Vashem has one million people a year. Where they can be seen better than here. And the Oscar for the Best Picture of 1993 goes to Schindler's List. Steven Spielberg, Gerald Mullen, and Branko Luswick producing. My number was a3317. I'm a Holocaust survivor. It's a long way from Auschwitz to this stage. Hi, Oscar Schindler, Steven Spielberg. And here, he, for me, is like Oscar Schindler for this crack of poor people. In the name of the six million Jews killed in the Shoah and other Nazis victims, I want to thank everyone who acknowledged this movie. Thank you. Based in Croatia and Hollywood, the 83-year-old Oscar-winning producer Branko Lustig, who as a boy survived the Nazi camps of Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen, presented his prize for Schindler's List to the Yad Vashem Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem for safekeeping. In a ceremony attended by the Croatian president, Lustig also met with one of the 1,200 Jewish people saved by Oskar Schindler, who Yad Vashem acknowledged as one of the righteous among the nations. I was 18 years old when Oskar Schindler saved my life. Oskar Schindler, Oskar Schindler paid the Germans money so they would let him take us. Otherwise, we would all have been dead. In recent years, Lustig has reflected on his own personal history and in 2011 returned to Auschwitz, this time to take part in a ceremony he was deprived of decades earlier, his bar mitzvah. Bar mitzvah is a matter of tradition. And I was thinking, with tradition, I cannot die without bar mitzvah. Schindler's List has become a benchmark for Holocaust features. Being present on set was an emotional experience for Lustig, but also a refreshing one when he briefly stepped into the shoes of Martin, the maitre d'. Martin? Yes, sir. Who is that man? Schindler. From his new location at the Yad Vashem Visual Center, the Oscar will continue to convey the message of the other Oscar. Never again. Before we go, here's our cultural recommendation for today. Agri 
Agnes Martin was known for her evocative paintings manifesting in delicate pencil lines and pale color washes. Although calm, her style was supported by her deep conviction in the emotive and expressive power of art. Martin believed that spiritual inspiration and not intellect created great works. This is the first retrospective of Martin's work since 1994, a great introduction to the extraordinary visionary paintings of the artist diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. That's it from us for today. I hope you enjoyed our show. We'll be back tomorrow with another one, so please join us again.